anywhere you go in Greece, you will see these street food places everywhere. And I guess that's normal. Who wouldn't want to eat one of these juicy souvlaki every single day of their life? But something important to know is that Santorini it's not like that. There's not street food at every corner. And that's because, well, you can make a much bigger profit by opening an actual restaurant with overpriced food rather than selling souvlaki for 4 euros a piece. But don't worry, after watching this video, you'll know exactly what street food to eat in Santorini and where to find it. All right, when you think of street food in Greece, the first image that should pop into your head is this, a souvlaki. So let's start by talking about this one before moving on to the other stuff you can also find here. And first, let's have a little vocabulary lesson, because I keep hearing the words gyros, pita and souvlaki being used in very exotic ways. So here we go. Souvlaki is the whole thing. So meat and vegetables wrapped in pita bread. That is a souvlaki. Gyros is this. Meat piled up on a vertical skewer which slowly roasts and from which we regularly cut the outer part which is nice and crispy. So gyros is just that type of meat, nothing else. The other type of meat is called kalamaki. Those are little meat sticks grilled separately. The main difference between gyros and kalamaki is that kalamaki is usually juicier because it has actual bits of meat much thicker than gyros but on the other hand gyros has this very crispy feel which the kalamaki doesn't have at all so both are really good it really depends on what you like most now just for you to know not all Greeks agree on this terminology I just taught you these three words I just explained gyros pita and souvlaki well that's how southern Greeks use it including in Athens in northern Greece they call this a pita gyros remains gyros and this is a souvlaki all right now that you know what all these words mean let me tell you everything you need to know about souvlaki in Santorini souvlaki being the plural of souvlaki the main hub to eat them is in Fira Santorini's capital and more specifically Fira's main square and its direct surroundings there are at least 10 different places there that serve souvlaki. In my opinion, the two best ones are Lucky's Souvlaki and Nidder Grill. With a little bonus point for Nidder Grill, because on top of the usual chicken and pork gyros, they also have lamb gyros, absolutely delicious and pretty difficult to find even in Athens. So this is a huge insider's tip I'm giving you. If you want to try something very, very special, even for a Greek, then go and get that lamb gyros at Nid the Grill. Now, the next thing you might be wondering is what should I put in my souvlaki? Because you'll see all these vegetables and sauces in front of you, but what's the Greek way of doing it? I've had my heart broken too many times hearing tourists order a souvlaki with, let's say, chicken gyros, and then when asked what else they want in the wrap, they're all confused because they hadn't thought it through. So they panic and they say, ketchup. No. So let me tell you how Greeks order souvlaki. As I already mentioned, the choice is usually chicken or pork, each one being available either as gyros or kalamaki. If you order pork and you want to do it like a Greek, the secret words you have to say are with everything. So for instance, yes, hello, I would like to have one souvlaki with pork gyros with everything. Now what this means is tzatziki sauce, sliced tomatoes, some raw onions and fries. If you don't want one of those ingredients, onions for instance, then you will say I would like a souvlaki with pork gyros with everything but no onions. Now this was for pork. If you say with everything for chicken, you'll also get the sliced tomatoes and the fries like for pork. But instead of onions, you'll get lettuce. And instead of tzatziki, you'll have something Greeks call sauce, which differs from one place to the other. But it's always mayonnaise based, usually with also some mustard and then some spices. The reason for this is that chicken has a milder taste than pork. And tzatziki being pretty strong in flavor because of the garlic, it would cover the taste of the chicken. However, there's not a national consensus on what's the best sauce for chicken. So usually when you say with everything for chicken, the guy will ask you tzatziki or sauce? I tend to prefer this sauce over tzatziki, but if you're a tzatziki fan, go for it. 
One little bonus tip I'm giving you, if you like spicy food, then instead of tzatziki or sauce, you can ask for tiro kafteri, which is a very traditional spicy cheese spread. Goes beautifully both with chicken and pork. All right, so this was for the souvlaki, but there's much more. And before I move on to the next point, if you're enjoying the video so far, please hit the like button because it does make a big difference for the YouTube algorithm. Oh, and if you want to know what type of tours I run, this is my Instagram page. All right, so let's talk about bakeries now. And something that will surprise you when visiting Greece for the first time is how much savory stuff bakeries actually have. All sorts of cheese, meat and vegetable pies. The most famous one being the spanakopita, a spinach pie usually also stuffed with feta cheese. All these bakery pies are without a doubt the second most traditional type of street food in Greece after the souvlakia. They're very popular amongst Greeks because they're super tasty and very affordable at the same time, usually around two euros for one. However, there's one big secret in the bakery world in Greece. Many bakeries, mainly the smaller ones, don't prepare these pies themselves. They buy everything frozen from large industrial food manufacturers and bake those frozen pies in their oven every morning. Now, I'm not saying this is a bad thing. As a matter of fact, I'm eating those on a daily basis and I like them, but it's undeniable that when you go to a bakery that serves fresh products that they've actually prepared themselves from scratch on the same day, it tastes completely different. So let me tell you, in my opinion, the two best bakeries in Santorini. The first one is Santa Irini in Perisa and the second one is Svoronos Bakery in Fira. And fun fact, Svoronos is located just next to McDonald's. Because yeah, even in Santorini you can go to McDonald's. So there you go. If you want to go to a bakery in Santorini that serves only fresh stuff, then Svoronos and Santa Irini are the ones. All right, so this was for the very Greek street food. So souvlakia and bakeries. Now I'm going to tell you what else you can find in Santorini street food wise, even though it's not exactly Greek traditional. And by the way, everything I'm about to tell you is once again located in Fira. The other towns in Santorini will be much more restaurant oriented. First, we have pizza and and pasta in a street food slash takeaway version, which you can find on the main square of Fira at a place called The Family. Then we have falafels for all my vegan and vegetarian friends out there. There are two places serving falafels. My recommendation is Falafel Land. I'm currently working on a video on the best vegan and vegetarian restaurants in Santorini and Falafel Land is one of them. If this video is ready by now, you can find it right here. Otherwise, you can just subscribe. And finally, we have crepes, both sweet and savory. The best place for that is Crème de la Crepe, which is once again just next to the main square of Fira. And in terms of prices, everything I just mentioned, all of it is usually around 7 euros, except for pizza slices, which are usually around 3 euros. As I've already told you, many of these street food places are around Fira's main square. But as you might have realized, this square is not exactly the nicest looking part of the island. So instead of sitting down somewhere there on that ugly square, you can walk for two minutes and reach this place which is much nicer in my opinion. I will leave the GPS coordinates in the description box down below. Now in case you're wondering if there's also some street food to be found in the famous village of Ia, the answer is yes but definitely not as much as in Fira. There are only three places in Ia that sell souvlakia and by the way all three are in the area of the bus station. And just so you know they're 50% more expensive than in Fira, so not great. Ia village is all about fancy restaurants and fine dining venues. Definitely the opposite of the street food vibes of Fira. So if you're on a budget or if you prefer street food over fancy meals, then Ia is not made for you. Talking about being on a budget, I made a whole video on how to save a lot of money with some basic tricks and you can find it right here. And if you're a foodie and you want to know what to eat in Santorini, stuff you can only find here and no Nowhere else in Greece. Well, you can click on this one. And there you go. That's it for today. I hope you guys liked it. See you in the next one. Bye.